Module 1.1, The Mind's Eye and Nonverbal Awareness, Take 2. Week 1, Thinking Lecture 1.1, Cogito Ergo Sum, The Five Senses, The Mind's Eye, and Nonverbal Awareness. Without an appreciation for what psychologists call metacognition, that is, thinking about thinking, sustainability education has been shown to founder. See, for example, Sustainability Education is Thinking the Key, an article by L. Lander in Sustainability, the Journal of Record, 2015. Drawing on the latest research in environmental education, we start this course out by helping you gain an awareness of and appreciation for the way you think and the origins of thought patterns in historic, both historically and evolutionarily. When I was a graduate student, I created my Stages of Thought for Social and Environmental Impact. It had thinking, imagining the past and the future and making them appear present in the mind, Thinking out loud, speaking, singing, dancing, gesturing. Thinking out louder, writing, drawing, painting, sculpting. Thinking out even louder, radio, film, and television. And then thinking out loudest, virtual reality, immersive 3D gaming, theme parks. And then finally, thinking manifested, architecture and design, the creation of tools and the creation of civilizations. Now note that at any stage, one can jump immediately to manifested thinking, but in order to get cooperation from other human beings, some form of thinking out loud is necessary since we are not yet telepathic beings. Our thesis is that technologies amplify how loud we can think and hence how great an effect or impact we can have on others. This is a course in envisioning sustainability. And in it, we explore the development of and encourage the application of what I called stages of thought for social and environmental impact. It's a course where thinking about sustainability leads to sustained action. You see, we human beings have actually been living sustainably and engaging in sustainable actions for far longer than we have lived unsustainably. That's why we're still here, all 7.7 .7 billion of us, twice as many as when I was in high school. And it's how we've gotten as far as we have. Our unique evolutionary process resulted in an animal that can both think and do. As the Dean of Patel College of Global Sustainability is fond of saying to incoming students, we at USF see ourselves as both a think tank and a do tank. We engage in what we call praxis, the place where theory, thinking, and practice doing come together. But that shouldn't be unique. It's what homo sapiens do best. At least we think we do. So we need to explore how the act of thinking leads to acting. And to do that, we want to take you on a journey along the evolutionary pathway from thinking to action and investigate how envisioning sustainability in the mind's eye, thinking about sustainability, leads to real-world, on-the-ground manifestations of sustainable practice and public perception of sustainability. So what does that path look like? Well, first, we develop the ability to think to take our past memories and present perceptions and prognosticate future possibilities. We developed imagination and creativity, something that my professor, when I was at Harvard, Pulitzer Prize winning evolutionary biologist E.O. Wilson, described so well in his new book, The Origins of Creativity. See, thinking can be defined as imagining the past and the future and making them appear present in the mind. A neat trick, huh? We seem to be one of the very few creatures on Earth that can do that. But it apparently wasn't enough for us, since for better or for worse, we can't read minds. So we evolved the capacity to communicate our thoughts and began thinking out loud by developing the ability to gesture, to speak, to sing, and to dance. We developed language. But thinking out loud in these ways had huge limitations, limitations of temporality. Everything was a live performance. We engaged in great improv, in early forms of theater and oration, playing out possible future comedies and tragedies, and oral traditions to carry the stories of the moral and environmental consequences of our actions from generation to generation. But many of our experiments in sustainable and unsustainable practices died with the cultures who experienced them, and lessons were lost. By the early Neolithic period, just as we were stumbling into the widespread application of our thousands of years experimentation with controlling the other life forms with whom we shared the planet through domestication and agriculture, most of them dangerously unsustainable, we began suddenly thinking out louder. 
We invented 10,000 years ago writing, drawing, painting, and sculpting. And with these more or less permanent forms of thinking, expressed on paper and canvas and in wood and stone, created literal history, literacy. We went from being prehistoric to being civilized. For some 10,000 years, a drop in the bucket rel relative to the roughly 200,000 years we've been thinking humans, we've spread civilization and its various sustainable and unsustainable practices around the world in records we can now examine and critique. For example, up to this day, we still mine the ancient scriptures of the world and elaborate paintings and carvings on church walls to glean an understanding of phrases like, as we sow, so shall we reap, and parables about considering the lilies of the field and sparrows of the air. And we agonize over why we got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, where we're told we lived a vegan lifestyle where fruit and clean water was plentiful and apparently then got cursed by thinking the wrong thoughts as a result of eating the wrong fruit. Cursed to a back-breaking life in the hot sun trying to plant and harvest wheat for our daily bread or slaughtering innocent lambs. <laughs> It was only a little over a century ago, though, that we began thinking out even louder by inventing radio, film, and then television. And now, digital concatenations of sound and imagery and motion pictures and animations through internationalized media broadcasting platforms like YouTube and other social media. Never before has the ability to share our thoughts about the way we see and would like or not like to see the world been so universally available. But it didn't stop there. This generation has developed a way to think out loudest through the new tools of theme park creation, where new thoughts and techniques from architecture and planning and imagineering, a unique combination pioneered by Disney to combine imagination and engineering, have led to real life experiments in building and in transportation and lifestyle, on to this decade's world building for immersive multiplayer 3D gaming, and now virtual and augmented reality, all of which are influencing what we can call thinking most highly manifested, thinking brought into being through their application to real world architecture and design and urban planning, through the creation of tools and ultimately whole new civilizations, both here and off world. Now we must note that in the 21st century, as beneficiaries of the long history of thinking out louder and louder and louder, we no longer have to think linearly at any stage in our thought process, we can jump immediately to manifested thinking. You can certainly try to apply any and all of your sustainability thoughts at your own home on a whim. Yes, we are thinking out louder professionals, so please do try this at home. But in order to get cooperation from other human beings so that they might want to bring some of the sustainable practices you think are important into their homes and communities, some form of thinking out louder is always necessary. After all, we're not telepathic beings yet, as I've said. So in this class, we don't just tell each other the stories of how we came to think and do or what we are currently thinking and doing to make the world more sustainable. In this course, we also equip you with the techniques and technologies to make thinking out loudest your ultimate deliverable. Creating manifestations of your imagined best of all possible worlds, of utopian sustainable futures that others can see and understand and even experience through the magic of audio, video, and virtual and augmented reality and real life sustainability do tank projects. That is your classwork and homework. And we will guide you in applying the technologies at our disposal to their creation, writing, music, art, photography, video editing, game creation, additive design and manufacture, and 3D world building. Our thesis is that these technologies amplify how loud we can think and hence how great an effect or impact we can have on others. After all, the out loudest form of thinking we can do is when we can apply our ideas for sustainability to our daily lives and affect the lives of our children and all future generations in a positive way. That is the ultimate goal of envisioning sustainability. But for now, let's go back to the beginning. I think, therefore I am. Cogito ergo sum. That's how René Descartes said it in Latin in his 1644 classic, Principles of Philosophy. Seven years earlier, he had famously written it in French. Je pense donc je suis, in his 1637 tome, Discourse on the Method of Rightly Conducting One's Reason and of Seeking Truth 
in the sciences, or in French, discours de la méthode pour bien conduire sa raison et chercher la vérité dans les sciences. And he did so, according to the Wikipedia entry, quote, so as to reach a wider audience than Latin would have allowed, Latin having been the language of scientists and philosophers and priests at that time. And that is the essence of thinking and then thinking out loud. We think, therefore we exist. But for others outside our immediate circle to know that we exist and for others to know what we think about our existence, we of course need to think out loud and reach a wider audience than mere thinking aloud our ancestors who could certainly think but could at first not speak and later could think and speak and yet could not write. As E.O. Wilson reminds us, quoting Milton's Paradise Lost, a mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell and a hell of heaven. And he goes on to say, as a rule, people do not like the solitude of their own thoughts. That way too often lies madness. <laughs> This course gives you the tools and techniques for avoiding that madness, for envisioning sustainability individually and collectively, and making your thoughts about it manifest, and giving you the media to make your thoughts have influence. But it starts with thinking about how to think about sustainability. One can look at human history as the history of animals on Earth thinking about their environments and their roles in them, then forming communities and thinking out loud by developing methods and patterns of communication as so many animals and even microbes and plants do. But then, thinking out louder and finally thinking out loudest, a progressive movement from the relative madness of being stuck inside our own heads with our private thoughts about what makes our lives and environments seem good or bad, on to the public consensus building and possibility for collective intelligence that self-expression makes possible. Shakespeare famously wrote in the second act of Hamlet, there is nothing either good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. He said, to me it is a prison. Well then it isn't one to you since nothing is really good or bad in itself. It's all what a person thinks about it. Now, for human beings trapped in the prison of our minds, as well as imprisoned by uncomfortable and unsustainable environments that cause us stress or pain, life can seem like hell. But when we can share common cause through speech and poetry and prose and sing songs together of amazing grace and heaven on earth, and by sharing our longings and dreams for a better tomorrow, declare, I have a dream. That is when the candle of hope starts to burn bright enough to free us from the shackles of our fears and dire imaginings. Thoughts of sustainability and hopeful outcomes become our reality when we can share our best thoughts even during our worst times. And that is what has gotten humanity through its darkest nights. It is the emergent properties that come from expressing our best thoughts and make building a better world possible when most of us think things can't get much worse. With expression comes true culture, and culture is the technological adaptation that gave humans our unique power to alter our environments to suit our dreams of paradise, rather than simply trying to adapt to whatever nature throws at us. But what of thinking by itself? There are many people in the modern world who long for a simpler existence, to a return to silence, who are overwhelmed or confused or upset by all the chatter of human expression by all the competing visions of the good life and all the discord and drama over what constitutes a threat. People who are annoyed by the noise, the news, the promises and perils pounded into us by the politicians, by the billboards and the t-shirt slogans and product placements screaming at us from all directions. The visual as well as auditory pollution creating a cacophony of competing thoughts that can often paralyze action. So much news and so much fake news, an information glut and an information age that so saturates us with other people's thoughts, we can hardly hear ourselves think. But since thinking without expressing and testing our thought against social and environmental realities leads to solipsism and detachment from reality, we need to find a balance between pure thinking and theoretical reasoning and applied thinking and practical research. Many people turn to meditation to calm their thoughts. We strive to go blank and to go back to an 
animal kind of pure awareness, unburdened by the memories of the past and concerns for our futures and ground truthing our wildest speculations. We often want to simplify and simply be present and in the moment. Or we want to go off the rails and get lost in Never Never Lands and fantasy utopias. The question is, can we make a better world by doing so? In this course module, we experiment with the experience of thinking as its own reward without connecting thought to influence or activity. We ask the question, how much time should we spend in meditative and contemplative thought states? And how much in application, outreach, and action? Can sustainability be achieved if our reflections of the world are merely faithful reflections that mirror the actual information our senses pull in? Or do we need to actually spend more time out of the real world in order to see different creative possibilities and solutions for the real world? Pure thought does not at all imply not thinking about the realities of the past or scientific models or predictions of the future or a consideration of the actual or imagined behavior of other people and organisms. We humans have long had the capacity to construct elaborate fantasies and imaginings of future worlds and possibilities. And as E.O. Wilson points out in The Origins of Creativity, this conferred adaptive evolutionary advantages even before we developed the capacity to speak out loud and to use literature and art to create visualizations of our ideas and create the technologies to implement them. As most scholars will tell you, allowing our minds to wander, to cogitate through abstract thought, to contemplate, unburdened by their connection to practical considerations, is a marvelous way to sharpen our capacity for concrete thinking. History is replete with great armchair philosophers and theoretical physicists, scientists like Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein, who spent most of their time in their own heads. Einstein stated, imagination is more important than knowledge. He added, knowledge is limited while imagination encircles the world. Wilson echoed this when he says, quote, the realm of science is everything possible in the universe. The realm of the humanities is everything conceivable to the human mind. And he calls for all educators to once and for all bring the sciences and humanities to back together again holistically, as we endeavor to do in this course. Many of science's greatest contributions, like the special theory of relativity and our understanding of black holes, have come from pure thought experiments. There is great value to flights of fancy. Many scientists share the experience of the chemist Auguste Kekulé, who credited his discovery of the ring structure of benzene and aromatic chemistry to a dream he had where dancing atoms arranged themselves into the form of a snake eating his own tail. The fictions created by thinking, even while sleeping, often lead to better factual understanding of the world. And of course, as Isaac Asimov famously said, today's science fiction is tomorrow's reality. So in this section of our course, we encourage you to take a trip into your mind's eye, into your dreams, into your own deep thoughts and speculative fictions about possible sustainable and unsustainable outcomes yet to come or not. This is the part of our course where we travel together into the twilight zone, into that fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. That dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, that lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This section of the course is all about the dimension of imagination. And once we've imagined a better future, we can set about sharing our speculations, envisioning sustainability, imagineering our dreams, and making it a shared reality.